So, um, as uh, Elaine mentioned, I'm, well, let me start with this. I'll bet pretty much everyone in this room has interfaced with a cartography lab at a university at some point, um, either as a staff or as a, as a student using their resources or uh, using data they produced. Um, has anyone like never interacted with a, a cartography lab at university? Okay, a couple of people, but most, most people. Um, so uh, it's, it's pretty common among universities with uh, geography departments that are pretty well regarded. They do a lot of good stuff in the world. Um, but there is one department that has not had this privilege for about 20 years, uh, and that's Penn State. Um, so I, I uh, did my PhD there, uh, I became a postdoc. My postdoc duties were to start a cartography laboratory, and uh, this, is, this is what I'm gonna talk about today. So cartography lab can be thought of as a plant. Um, there's there's kind of three components to this. First, you have your roots. These are, uh, this is the legacy that you're building off of, the resources that you have already. Um, second, you have uh, the, the soil, the context, the location, the stuff that you have there that allows you to, to grow this lab. Um, and then when you have that in place, uh, they're, they're the wonderful like fruiting bodies of the plant that you put in the soil and those are, those are the projects and the maps that you've created. Um, does this metaphor work chronologically? Not really, but I'm gonna go with it, so um, buckle up. Um, so we had two kind of overriding goals for this project. One of them was to um, maintain Penn State's reputation for really excellent cartographic research. Um, uh, there's, when I was doing my, my dissertation there, there wasn't really like a consolidated location where people could access resources. Um, and, uh, you know, I got through it and other people got through it, but uh, we think that would be, that would be beneficial to, for future researchers. Um, but also we wanted this place to be a, um, a, a sort of a device for the Department of Geography to interface with the public. Um, so it could be uh, classes that are coming through, people that uh, uh, want to talk about maps in their like non-geography courses can come in and, and use their uh, use this equipment. Um, but also community members in State College, people in the greater sort of like central Pennsylvania region, organizations, companies, basically like whoever wants to um, uh, to use these resources, uh, we want to be able to to make that accessible to them. So uh, there was, in fact, another geographics lab um, that uh, some people may, may be aware of. Uh, in 1982, there was the Daisy Geographics Lab. Um, this was a, uh, uh, they did a lot of early um, uh, like web and digital and interactive mapping projects, uh, a lot of research in that area. Uh, there is this cool, hip, new happening thing called the internet that was, uh, it's, I don't know, it's, I, I think it's a fad, but um, uh, they were really into it. And uh, uh, for some reason, I, I don't know the story behind this, but they ran the Penn State um, Graduate School website for some reason. Um, no, I don't think there's a reason to, but they had the resources. And so this is an example of like, if, if you bring people like this together, then they can do interesting stuff. Um, you might not be able to read it, but in the bottom left-hand corner here is a set of instructions for how to use a website with a graphical interface. Um, it's, it's that brand new. Um, also, has anybody used PASDA? A few people. Um, so that was another geographics project. It's uh, for people who, who don't know, it's, it's like the geospatial data clearinghouse for Pennsylvania. Um, pretty important resource for the whole state. I have my students use it every single semester for projects, um, and uh, that, that came out of the geographics lab. Um, there was also a bunch of people who were involved with it that went on to do really interesting stuff. Um, Mike Herman is one. Uh, uh, David DiBiase was involved, Jeremy Crampton, a um, bunch, of, bunch of people who uh, um, 
led really interesting careers. So that's the legacy that we're working with. And uh, so we're trying to figure out how to, how to build on that and sort of update it so that um, we can do interesting contemporary work. So there's three things that we need to figure out. One of them, uh, we had this chunk of money that came from the university and we're spending it in a university. Um, and so as a result, everything is going to be uh, quick, efficient, easy. Uh, there's gonna be a minimum number of emails sent back and forth. Um, ha ha ha, says, laughing through the tears. Um, yeah, that's, you know, it is what it is. Uh, people were very generous in, in offering us funding. Um, while that is happening, though, uh, we do have computers and can start working on projects. So uh, this is actually a really important step for working out the kinks in terms of workflow and uh, communication among people involved with the, the, with the lab, doing things like setting up Slack channels and um, stuff like that. That's a, that was a really critical experience. Um, so it's, it's good that we had that. Um, and then finally, we wanted to figure out how to, uh, sort of building on that idea of this being a, a way to interface with the public. Um, uh, I'm sure a lot of people here are familiar with the idea of geography being a discovery major, that people, uh, undergrads come to school not knowing about geography, and, uh, and then they find out about it, and they fall in love with it and get three degrees in it, and then they present at NASIS. Um, <laughs> normal trajectory. Uh, so uh, people don't know about it. Um, the uh, bottom floor of the geography department at Penn State has a bunch of classrooms that are used for, for uh, classes in other departments. So there's like thousands of students walking through it every single week. Um, if we were able to uh, create a, a space that was inviting and interesting and kind of flashy and cool, um, then maybe that would be a good way to, to recruit undergraduates. Um, so those were, those were our goals. Um, now, uh, there's a lot of issues that can come up in the process. Um, I wanted to, to talk through some of them. Um, sometimes when your building was uh, built in the 1960s or 70s, uh, about 75% of it is going to be load-bearing asbestos uh, or in contact with asbestos. And so you're going to have to remove all of it. Remediation process is like thousands of dollars. It takes several weeks. Um, sometimes you might have a blackboard that's stuck to the wall with asbestos glue, which I didn't know existed uh, until we started this project. Uh, and then you have to take like a mini jackhammer and jackhammer little craters into the wall to get the glue out and then plaster over the wall entirely uh, or else you have a wall full of craters, which I thought looked kind of cool, but um, it, it makes sticking maps up on the wall kind of difficult. So that was, that was a no-go. Um, so that's a bummer, but it does mean that you can get a new door uh, with a glass panel and it's like wood and nice and we're working on a, a card swipe system um, that's, that's in progress, but uh, so that's exciting. And then you can also get a new floor and replace the sort of like bus seat pattern uh, institutional tile that's there before with a very nice like bamboo um, some sort of vinyl composite thing. It's very, it feels soft somehow. I don't know how that works, but um, it's, it's pretty choice. Uh, and then you can also choose new paint um, it, to replace the like gunmetal institutional stuff that is already there and have a wall that is dark so that you can put maps against it and see how different colors are set off and then same thing with light colored walls. So really asbestos affords you a lot of opportunities. Is, is, that's kind of the takeaway. Uh, sometimes when you buy equipment, it comes in a box the size of an Alfa Romeo, and uh, the pallet is broken, and so the delivery guy will dump it at the uh, loading dock and say, I'm not touching this anymore, I don't want to deal with it. And I say, that's fair. Uh, and uh, so you have to find your IT guy and get a uh, pallet jack from a different department that's like a quarter mile away on the other side of campus. Um, but what that means is that you get a whole bunch of cool equipment um, that's like, really big and, and fancy and interesting. Sometimes you have a professor who does a lot of uh, augmented and, and virtual reality research and then leaves for a different university. And then you have to get a postdoc to go through a giant closet all summer and uh, sift through all the equipment to make sure everything works um, and uh, uh, is, is like functional. But 
it does mean that you get a whole bunch of brand new equipment basically for free. So this is the finished product. Um, we wanted to make sure that it was visually differentiated from the sort of like government archive basement look of the rest of the building, but also was, was welcoming um, that it, it didn't look like a place that, uh, you know, was, you needed like credentials to get into or something. So um, this is what we ended up with. So with all that in place, you can start doing real projects. Um, these are people in the, the map fields. This is the end of this metaphor. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> no more of this. So this is the first project that we worked on as a geographics lab. And uh, what this is showing is the number of people who would get vaporized if a nuclear reactor on campus uh, melted down, which I've been assured would only happen after a, a comically specific series of circumstances. So it's, I, I think it's fine. But um, the answer to this is about 92,000 people would, would be mystified turned into mist, not confused. Um, <laughs> they might be confused for a second. And then it's just pink um, in the air. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what would happen. Um, something horrible. Anyway, so this is, a, this is this map. Please don't think about that anymore. Uh, uh, it was actually an update of a map that the last geographics, map, uh, geographics lab made. Um, every so often, these maps need to be updated. It's a regulatory compliance thing. And um, uh, so I, I, I like the sort of like poetic continuity of uh, our first project being, being an update of another project. Um, just to, uh, th I'm talking about these to give a sense of like the scope and variety of, of stuff that you can do. Um, this is a project that has nothing to do with Penn State, no connection to it. Uh, it's a marathon in North Central PA, which is really beautiful part of the country, absolutely nothing there um, besides trees. And they're gorgeous trees, but it's, it's just trees. Um, and they came to us and they said, well, we have this map of the marathon already, um, but it's not very good. Uh, can you improve it? And I said, maybe. Um, so I gave him my best shot, and, and this is what we ended up with. Um, so this is meant to be printed out and distributed to um, people actually running the race, but also be on the website. And uh, it's, it's meant to be functional, but also serve as a way to like, promote tourism in the region. So it had this like, multifaceted objective. Um, there's an artist, Stacy Levy, who uh, created a uh, piece of installation art that's in the Penn State Arboretum, and that's a picture of it on the right. Um, this is uh, hydrographic features in central Pennsylvania that have been sandblasted into stone, and when it rains, they fill up with water, and you get these little, like, little tiny rivers. It's really gorgeous, super cool piece. Um, she's doing a very similar piece in the Bay Area, for a watershed education center that's being constructed, and that's uh, rendering it uh, of it on the right or on the left. Um, we were enrolled to make a map for that. Uh, we can't show the whole thing, but this is like a little section of it. Um, the, the idea was that half of the map would show contemporary hydrographic data, and then the other half, and that's on the left, uh, the other half would show um, like pre-colonial hydrographic data. Uh, really remarkable data set that we got to work with. I don't know how they did it, but um, it's, it's super cool. It's also f free online somewhere. Um, so definitely try to, try to find it if you're interested. Uh, and then finally, this is part of a, a larger renovation of the geography department. This is going to be uh, sort of like a visual focal point um, around the main offices on, on the third floor, if you've ever been there. Um, for a long time, there used to be a, uh, a series of plastic relief maps showing the terrain of central Pennsylvania. It was very cool, but it was getting kind of grody. Um, it was like a few decades old. And uh, so that had to come down. These are uh, six and a half by four foot illuminated resin panels that are gonna be mounted to the wall. And they each show uh, different types of, of spatial data and different uh, uh, parts of the world. Um, we're really excited about this. And this is, uh, we printed out with the printer that we bought, uh, it, full, full size renderings, uh, or like, um, uh, I don't know what these uh, would be, mock-ups, mock-ups of the maps, hung them up there. Um, these doors don't exist anymore, I don't think. Uh, no, they're gone. 
So uh, we're, we're moving ahead with that. So that's, that's very exciting. So this is a list of people who have helped and continue to help with launching the lab. Um, as I mentioned in my intro, I have another job, so I'm not on this list anymore, but um, uh, they're doing a really amazing job. And so if you're at all interested in either working with them or like what they're doing, or if you want to do something similar uh, at your own university or organization, or just like you want to set up a, a space like this, uh, definitely reach out to one of them. And that's it. Thanks. Yeah, questions? Yeah, good, um, good legacy. Yes? When you do projects outside of Penn State, do you, do you just do them for free? Or? That, that was something uh, in that process of like doing early projects that was really important is figuring out billing. Um, it's, it's still kind of a work in progress because directing money through university is, you know, it's, it's a fun adventure. Um, but, uh, you know, it just means it's really important to figure that out. Um, but uh, occasionally if there's like an internal project that has funding or something, then, then we'll do like a pro bono thing. But um, uh, rest of the project, like if there's funding available, then, um, then we'll charge for it. But charge how much? Uh, so this was, uh, you know, this was a, an ongoing problem with uh, Cart Labs uh, in some areas, is that they were competing with us commercial cartographers, using unpaid or low-paid student uh, labor to do the bike maps for the state DOT or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do, yeah, do you want to? It's a pretty complicated algorithm where we charge. It's a, it's pretty light. Very reasonable prices that, that you can't, you would be losing money if you didn't work with us. That's, but that's not what I as a. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. You're underbidding me. Yeah, no, no. Okay. All right, thanks. Thank you.